Welcome to Electron Online. Now for something a little bit more challenging. Again, we're trying to find the resistance of this particular object. And we know that the resistance is going to be equal to the resistivity times the length of the object divided by the cross-sectional area. But in this case, the cross-sectional area is not constant. It varies. So our approach needs to be a little bit different. So what we need to do instead is we need to take a small little slice of it. So if you can imagine a small little slice, that would be kind of like a disc, like so. And the height of that disc, or at least the radius of the disc, that would be equal to y. And the thickness of the disc would be equal to dx. And of course, we're going to make that dx very, very tiny, so that the cross-sectional area doesn't change a lot over the small displacement of a dx. And what we can then do is we can then calculate the small amount of dr, the small amount of resistance of this little slice. So we can say that dr is equal to the resistivity of the material, assuming it's aluminum, it's 2.75 times 10 to the minus 8 ohm time meters. Notice that the radius in the beginning here is 1 centimeter, and at the end it's 2 centimeters, and that the length is equal to 10 meters. So we have the resistivity times the length, which is going to be dx, divided by the cross-sectional area. Now that's a circle, so it's going to be pi times r squared, but in this case r is going to be y, so we write that as y squared. So that means we have to find an equation that relates x to y. And what we can do is, if this would be, for example, the y-axis, and this here would be the x-axis, so this would be the y-axis, this would be the x-axis. Then if we continue on with this, we can see that this would be the equation of a straight line. And the equation of a straight line, let's put that over here, we can say that y is equal to mx plus b. So in our case, y is equal to the slope. The slope would be the rise over the run. The rise would be the difference in the height, which would be r2 minus r1, that's the rise. r2 minus r1 divided by the run, which is L, so that's the slope times x plus b, the y-intercept, which would be r1 for the intercept. Okay, that gives us the equation that needs to go here in the denominator. So let's see what we end up with. We have a y is equal to r2 minus r1, that would be 2 centimeters minus 1 centimeter divided by 10 meters, and that would be times x plus and that would be one centimeter for the intercept. So we have two minus one, that's one centimeter, that's 0.01 meter divided by 10 meters, that gives us y is equal to 0 0.001 times x plus, convert this to meters, so it would be 0 0.01. And that's the value of y that can go into our equation right here. So we can then write this as the resistivity times dx divided by pi times y, which is 0.001x plus 0.01 quantity squared. So now we're ready to turn that into an integral. We can now say that if r is equal to the sum of all the little drs, when we integrate from x equals 0 to x equals 10 meters, so from 0 to 10 meters, that would be equal to, well, when we pull out a rho uh, resistivity and a pi, we have the integral of dx divided by 0.001x plus 0.01 squared, and I guess that's it. Okay, now we probably need to do some sort of substitution. If we let, if we let, 0.001x plus 0.01 equal u, then du dx is equal to 0.001, and du is equal to 0.001 dx, or dx is going to be equal to du divided by 0.001. So now we have something to substitute in for dx to turn into a du, and we have something to substitute this quantity here and turn into a u. So our integral now will become the following. 
So the resistance of this object, R, is going to be equal to, we have the resistivity divided by pi times the integral from 0 to 10 meters. That's an x equals 0 to x equals 10 because those are x limits. But we're going to write in there du divided by 0 0.001 times u squared. Of course, 0 0.001 can come outside the integral sign. So now we can integrate this. We can say that r is equal to rho divided by 0 0.001. And that's going to be negative 1 over u evaluated from x equals 0 to x equals 10. Okay, since those are x limits, we can't plug them in. We have to plug, we have to revert back to what u is equal to, which is this quantity right here. So now we have the resistance is equal to, oh, I'm missing a pi. I can't forget my pi there. So we have this divided by 0 0.001 pi times, put the negative in front. So now we have 1 over u, and u is equal to 0.001x plus 0.01. And the limits are now from 0 to 10, and our x limits are now good. All right. So let's plug in the upper limit and I'll plug in the lower limit. See what we get. So r is equal to minus rho divided by 0.001 pi times... When you plug in the upper limit, we get 1 over, so here we have 10 times this, that would be 0 0.0, well, 0 0.01, because 10 times this is 0 0.01, plus 0 0.01. And then we plug in the lower limit, this goes to 0, and we go minus 1 over 0 0.01. All right. So as long as we keep track of our decimals, we're good here. So R is equal to minus the resistivity, 0 0.001 pi, times, this would be 1 over 0 0.02 minus 1 over 0 0.01. Okay, so, hmm. 1 over that, that would be actually equal to 50 minus 100, so we can actually make it easier when we take the inverse of that. So R is equal to minus resistivity over 0 0.001 pi times 1 over 0 0.02, which is equal to 50, minus over that, which is equal to 100. And notice that this negative will not take care of this, so now we end up with, this is equal to a positive 50 times the resistivity divided by 0 0.001 pi. And now we're ready to calculate the actual resistance. So now let's go over here. We'll say R is equal to, and remember that the resistivity that we got here was the resistivity of aluminum, which is right there. And so we get 50 times 2.75 e to the 8 minus divided by 0 0.001 and divided by pi equals, and that gives us a resistance of 1.20. So maybe I can squeeze it in here. R is equal to 1.20 times 10 to the minus 9, and that would be ohms. And there you go. That is how you find the resistance of an object that has a particular resistivity if the object isn't a perfect cylinder, a perfect, uh, uh, what we call it, uh, rectangular shape. If it has an odd shape like that where the cross-sectional area changes, you will have to find some sort of integration technique to come up with the correct answer. And that's how it's done.